Hi, this is the Wrestling Doctor from Pro Wrestling Extra. And this is a special report. What I've done is I'm sitting down here with John Davis. And what I want to do is want to ask him some questions. In um, February the 22nd, 2013, St. Mary's, Georgia, for United Pro Entertainment, John Davis faced Lance Alante in what many people are saying could be the match of the year. Matter of fact, this match was so brutal, people who I was sitting there with were asking for it to be stopped. So what I want to do, John, is I would like to ask you a few questions about this match and about what led up to it and exactly what happened. Because many of those fans walked out of the show stunned and not really understanding what they saw. I feel like I understood it, but I want you to tell them. So, and it was for this title, you put up this belt for a reason. How did this match come up on, come about? Well, when I first broke into the business years ago, um, I broke in with Kevin Cantrell, who helps run the company. He's, he's the owner. Uh, I was contacted about it and he asked me if I'd be interested in doing the show and um, I missed the first one, you know, uh, obligations or whatnot. Uh, and he's like, okay, well, can you make my second one? I was like, absolutely. He's like, well, just, just so you know, uh, Lance Lante has requested a match with you. And that kind of interested me because me and Lance have a little bit of a history and there were some things that I felt like needed to be aired out in the way that we wrestlers air our grievances, which is in the ring. But what I saw in the ring was not a grievance. What I saw in the ring was nothing but pure brutality. What I saw in the ring was what in the old school days was this far from being a shoot. You understand? You brutalize this guy. Something, there's something there. Can you, what is the problem with Lance Alante? My issue with Lance goes back, I don't know, eight years or so. Um, he's always been one of those kids that wanted to do bigger things in the business, as does everybody, but he really wanted to make a name for himself and you know, he's the guy that he's like, here, check out this tape. I was like, well, what is it? He goes, oh, it's Loki in Japan. Well, who's Loki? Oh, he wrestles for Ring of Honor. Well, what's Ring of Honor? I didn't know about any of this at the time, you know? So, he introduces me to good wrestling. And, you know, I started to study it a little bit more. And I started to work on making myself better. Um, and he, he was like, okay, well, I want to do this. And I want to do this. I'm going to hit the gym. I'm going to... I'm going to start working out. I'm going to get new gear. Da, da 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 And every year it was the same thing. You know, uh, he, he would call me like, man, I saw you I saw you on ECW. Congratulations. Oh, I saw you on TNA. Congratulations. Oh, you're on Ring of Honor. Congratulations. Oh, you're on, you're on um, Dragon Gate and Evolve. Congratulations. You're doing big things. But what bothered me is that every year when about the same time he would give me the call and be like, yeah, man, I'm going to hit the gym. I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to get new gear. I'm going to hit the gym, I'm going to get in shape, I'm going to get new gear. It was always the same thing. This kid had the world in front of him. He has all this potential, yet and still he just sat on his butt at home. He wanted to be the best wrestler in his small group of friends, in his small town for some small promotion. He was comfortable with that. And I didn't see that for him. I think he can do a lot more. Even more than we did on Friday. It could have been so much more, but he didn't see that potential. And it bothered me beyond belief. I've gone out of my way for this guy on numerous occasions. I've gotten booked on shows, I've gotten in tryouts, I've gotten in touch with the right people. Pisses on our way. Squanders every single opportunity that he has and it makes me mad because I hate to see potential wasted. Especially so much potential. You know, all of his friends are like, oh you're so good, you're so good, but he's not even close to what he can be. And you say that the match was brutal and I don't look at it as brutal. Sometimes the best way to learn a lesson is to teach it as hard as you can. It's not always going to be, okay, well, I'm going to hold your hand and direct you through life. I tried that. 
He didn't want it that way, so we did it mine. John, let me be honest with you. You know, you're, right now, you're calm, soft-spoken. You know, that night, you were not that way. You know, what makes you think you should be the one to tell Lance Alante he has to do? I owed it to him. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. I would have never started down the path that I started down had he not shown me the proper path to walk. He gave me the idea to get me to where I wanted to be. Like, he put that inkling in my head. I mean, I'm sure I would have saw it later on down the road, but who's to say it would have been that year? Who, who's to say it would have been the next year? Who's to say it would have been in the year after that? What he did is he showed me basically where I wanted to be. So, in doing so, he had the same mindset that I did. He wanted to be all those places that I, that I wanted to be. He wanted to do all those things that I wanted to do, and he wanted to do them before I did. So, in him not doing that, he... He showed me where I wanted to be, so I needed to show him where he needed to be. He Again, he said, okay, I want to do this, I want to do this, but he didn't. And he has the potential. And if you said that you didn't see the potential in him, I would call you a liar. If anybody said that they didn't see the potential in him, I would call him a liar because Lance is a very, very talented professional wrestler. Probably one of the most underrated in his state of Georgia. And he doesn't want to bring it to the surface. The cream's going to have to rise to the top. If you want to sit on the bottom, fine. But what I did, what I felt like I did, was show him that he can do a lot more than he thinks he can. Well, I think that's a little controversial, really. But but let's leave that lay. Let me ask you something about the match. Can you remember a moment in the match where you felt you had control most of the match? But is anything stand out that you remember of something that was exceptional? Uh, are we talking about overall or just during the match? Well, yes, during the match. Um, the emotion. Uh, you could feel it in the ring. And more so, you could feel it in the crowd. Definitely. You could, you could see people worrying. You could, you could see kids getting upset. You could see his friends looking at each other like, are they going to have to come in the ring and try to stop something? People were begging, begging for me to stop beating them. Yes. You know, and people were worried about his well-being. And that's kind of what, what stands out to me is the overall emotion. Because it didn't matter what happened. It didn't matter the beating I put on him. It didn't matter how many times I kicked him or how many times I punched him or how many times I threw him him. How many times I put him on the mat. Every time I drove him into that mat, he got back up. And it might, he might not have popped right back up, but he slowly and surely started to make his way back up. And that meant something to everybody that was there. And that meant something to me. Because it showed me that he wasn't a quitter. It showed me that he was a fighter. And I think it showed him the same thing. I think everybody saw that. You know, but it, I can't get past the beating. I can't get past the punishment you dished out to teach him a lesson at how good he could be. Okay. That's, that's what you're telling me, right? Okay, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. You're old school, right? Yes. Okay. So... You being old school, when you were coming up and you did something wrong and your parents were disappointed in you and your dad's like, all right, son, we got to have a talk. What did he do? I got a weapon. You're not his dad. I'm not saying that. But an authority figure, if you would have had somebody and, and say, say his dad's not around or say whoever's not around to teach him, I, I'm not his dad in the business. I'm not his dad in life. But I'm an authority figure in this particular aspect because we've been friends for a very long time. I would call him my brother. Okay? But... Me being older and me getting that experience that he should have, that's what it had to be. He had to be taken to the woodshed. And it's not, it wasn't me being disrespectful, it was me teaching him. And that's how you learn when you were younger, correct? Yes, I understand where you're coming from. In your words, it's, it's the way you did it in the ring, the brutality that was done in the ring. I saw the guy backstage, and he looked pretty bad. So yeah, you taught him a lesson. I am old school. I mean, I've been taught lessons by certain guys. You know, they came up to me and helped me up, and you did that too. At the end of the match, you said and you told him that you were wrong. You thought he couldn't do that, and he proved you wrong. So if you got anything to say to him now, look in that camera and talk to Lance Alante now. As we just talked about, you proved me wrong. 
I wasn't sure that you had it in you. And there was a long period of time in which I thought that you didn't have it in you. I thought that you were comfortable with being mediocre, with, with being good among the bad. I didn't think that you were really going to hit the gym. I didn't think that you were really going to get gear. I didn't think that you would ever leave your, your comfort zone. Now, was I a little bit rough on you? Maybe. Was I a little bit brutal? Maybe. Did you walk away with a lesson? Absolutely. Did you walk away a better wrestler than you walked into the match? Absolutely. Did everybody's view in the crowd and in your family of you as a wrestler and as a man change? Absolutely. But I'm not looking for any thanks. That's not what I wanted. I wanted you to get up every time I put you down. I wanted you to prove me wrong. I wanted you to show me what I knew you could do and what everybody else knew you could do. The only person that didn't know you could do it was you. But now you know. I don't want to thank you. If you feel like you need to thank me, if anybody feels like you need to thank me, let's help Alante become the wrestler he can be. You go out there every single night and you do the best that you can do and you show everybody that you are a true professional wrestler and you're understanding your craft and you want to be better, you want to be the best. You want to knock me down, you want to take my ring from me. That's what I want you to do. If you don't, the ring's always there. 18 feet of opportunity. You can do it again. Your choice. And we talked earlier and I mentioned that if you would go once more, put the belt up, or even without the belt, will you wrestle Lance Alante again? And you kind of looked at me, and at that time, I thought you were going to say no. I thought you were going to say, you don't have anything else to prove. Why should you give anything up to him? Does he have to prove himself even now, or has he done enough? Will you wrestle him again? Yeah, I'll absolutely wrestle him again. And I don't think that he has anything else to prove to me. He still has more to prove to himself. There were a few times in that match where he almost had me. And, I mean, you thought so. There was a couple times when I thought so. It took everything I had to carry out a couple of those things. There was a guy you said ran to the ring and thought the match was over with. Yes. You know, so, of course, I'll give him another match. If he thinks he can beat me, however many times he thinks it's going to take, we'll do it. Because I'm comfortable where I'm at as a wrestler. I know I can get better, but I'm happy where I am now. And if he's going to be that person to push me to get better, then I welcome the challenge. All right, John. I appreciate you uh, sitting down with me and telling us your side of the situation. I'm going to try to sit down with Lance and let him tell me his side of the situation. We're all going to be look forward, looking forward to the second meeting. Hopefully, they can, the uh, United Pro Entertainment will put this together because I'm telling you folks, that was something to see. So this is the Wrestling Doctor from Pro Wrestling Extra. Thanks. Mm -hmm.